We all love to hang out in the yard with our two-legged and four-legged friends. But did you know you have friends in your garden with six, eight, and even more legs? That's right. Today we'll learn about good bugs and how to get them to help out in the garden, plus a few bad bugs and some easier, healthier ways to control them. Welcome to Yard Talk. I'm Doug. And I'm Greg. If you're like a lot of folks, you may think bugs are icky, creepy, or just plain bad. But most bugs aren't a problem. Only a few bad bugs attack our plants and make gardening difficult. And we have a bunch of good bugs that help control the bad bugs and provide other important benefits like pollinating our fruits and veggies. When you use pesticides, you kill the good bugs along with the bad. Plus, as we've mentioned before, pesticides can be a health hazard to you, your children, and your pets. So let's learn how to let the good bugs help you out so you can spend more time enjoying your garden. Welcome to the Kookaburg Botanic Garden, north of Seattle. This garden was founded in 1958 when Dr. Art Kookaburg and his wife Maureen moved to a four-acre farmstead in Shoreline. Fifty years later, this amazing garden is now home to around 2,000 species of plants. This is a great place to come see some of our most beautiful native plants used in a designed garden setting. Well, we're here at the Botanic Garden to talk to Todd Murray of WSU King County Extension about good bugs in the garden. Todd, can you talk to us about the role of beneficial insects in the garden? Well, if it wasn't for insects in the garden, you probably wouldn't have a garden. Insects are very, very important pollinators. Bees, blue orchard mason bees, bumblebees, even some beetles and flies are very important pollinators to help move pollen through the yard. Insects are also very important predators and parasites of pest insects. Critters like ladybugs, green lacewings, and even parasitic wasps are very, very important for keeping pest populations low. Parasitic wasps are great at managing aphid populations in your yard. Insects are also really important decomposers that help the soil making process get started. Critters like filth flies and garbage flies and blow flies, without those we'd be up to our armpits and trash really quick. So they're very, very important to start the decomposition process early and help soil build in your yard. Most insects in your yard are good bugs. We have very few pest species that live here. So most of the insects that you encounter are good ones or benign. It's important to find resources out there to help you recognize which one are the good bugs and bad bugs. So how does someone encourage uh, beneficial insects in the garden? Almost all of our beneficial insects require nectar and pollen at some sort of their life stage to complete their whole life cycle. So offering a good diversity of different sizes and colors of flowers in your yard is very important for making sure that your, your good guys are being fed throughout the year. So thanks, Todd, for helping us understand about the important role of these heroes in the garden. If you want help identifying good bugs in your yard, check out the WSU Extension website. Now, what about the bad guys? Here's another stunning garden near Enumclaw. This is local author Marianne Benetti's garden. Marianne has written many gardening books specific to the unique conditions we have in the Northwest, including container gardening for Washington and Oregon and herb gardening for Washington and Oregon. Marianne takes a relaxed approach to gardening and has some tips for controlling potential problem backyard visitors. And we're not talking about your neighbors here. Oh no, we're talking about the uninvited critters that I don't want to share all my garden with. But there is a way, okay, first of all, who's the number one enemy, do you think? For me, slugs. Oh, all this shade that I have in my garden, slugs is the number one pest. But you know what? There's a humane way to get rid of your slugs, and it doesn't even involve beer. No beer? N no beer is something that your kid's gonna enjoy doing, because what I want you to do instead is subscribe to Seattle PI. Tell me more. Okay, the Seattle PI, the newspaper, to recycle your newspaper, all you need to do is crumple up damp newspaper and leave it in the garden, leave a little bit wad of it maybe in a container garden that something's been eating it, because when the sun comes out, 
the slugs, earwigs, sow bugs, all sorts of critters will naturally go to the damp newspaper. And then it's easy to just collect that newspaper and deposit it into the compost pile where not only will the newspaper decompose, but the slugs, the earwigs, the sow bugs, they'll be put to good use decomposing garden waste. And you don't waste good beer. A very good point. A lot of folks do use the beer traps and set those out. Okay, and now beer traps are effective. I'm not saying they're not, but they do, do cost money. And it's a waste of good beer, of course. And um, another thing about the beer traps is, in my neighborhood, we have some visiting dogs that like to come up and drink that beer. Oh, yes, so, yes. This is a good alternative newspaper. Now, what about those little cabbage moths? Oh, those white moths that flit around? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, Greg, that those little innocent looking moths turn into cabbage worms. And easier than getting rid of the cabbage worms once they're on your crops is to cover the crop with agricultural fleece, reme, or dirt cheap alternative, just use that uh, netting that they make little tutus out of for ballerinas. Oh. Tool netting, you can reuse it year after year. Cover your crops so that the butterflies cannot land on them and deposit their eggs. All right, I'm gonna throw you a curveball here. What about those little fast moving beetles? Oh, the shiny black beetles? Mm -hmm. Those are good guys of the garden. We don't wanna harm those at all. In fact, number one thing is teach kids to respect the little black beetles. Here's a good thing that I teach kids. If an insect moves quickly, like a ladybug, a lacewing, even a centipede, or a black beetle, leave it alone. It's a good insect. It's hunting down the slow moving insects that feed on our plants. Here's a great tip that we learned in Europe. Little clay flower pots, they were sitting all over the vegetable gardens in Europe. And when we asked why, it's because the clay flower pots will attract all sorts of insects and then in the morning, they can check them and say, okay, you're a good bug, you're a bad bug, and decide what to do instead of using a broad spectrum insecticide that kills everybody. We don't want to do that in the garden. I hear a lot of folks talking about crane flies. Oh, crane fly. Okay, crane fly, first of all, they scare people because when they're digging in their garden this time of year, they'll see these little thick, they're called leather jackets. They're, they're short little wormy larvae. And the reason they're called leather jackets, if you try to slice them, ooh, they got that really thick coat. But crane fly are not causing a lot of damage because we've gotten smart. And instead of spraying the lawn and killing all the crane fly, now we leave them be and pretty soon the birds figure out that you're feeding them instead of putting out bird seed. What a lazier option. Let the birds come and take the crane fly out of your lawn. Because you know how much crane fly you have in your lawn, it takes an incredible amount to actually do any damage to the grass. And that sure sounds like a relaxed approach to gardening. Letting the birds do the work is always the best. Absolutely, absolutely. What about aphids? Well now, aphid are easy to control when you realize they are always gonna be found in the same place. The tips of the new growth of your roses um, and taking care of a huge aphid outbreak is as easy as a hose. Hose them off and that gets rid of the majority of the aphid. The reason you don't want to kill every single aphid in your garden is because aphid, again, are food for the birds and for the lace wings and for the ladybugs. So you leave some of the bad guys so that the good guys exactly. are able to exist in your garden and do a lot of the work for you. And this is what we call a balanced garden where you have the beneficial insects helping you take care of the insects that aren't so beneficial to your plants. Sounds great. Thanks, Marianne. Now, if I could just get more good bugs in my yard. Fortunately, you can attract beneficial insects with some plants that really enhance the design of your garden. First, make sure you have some early blooming flowers to feed your pollinators when they first emerge from hibernation. Our native red flowering currant is excellent. Then add plants that will keep good bugs hanging around through the growing season. My favorites are lavender and catmint. They are easy to grow in sunny locations and have lovely colors and scent. For brilliant color and lots of bees, try our native west coast Ceanothus. For shade, try the bold false Solomon seal with its lusty plumage. To draw hummingbirds, try tall Oregon grape and our native dogwood. Finally, nothing beats some of the flowering fruit trees for both design impact and beneficial insect appeal. And you can harvest the fruit. Yeah. 
Mason bees are hardworking pollinators. If you have fruit trees, you need bees to pollinate them or you won't get any fruit. Mason bees are great for this because they're not aggressive, they're gentle. In fact, they don't pay much attention to humans at all. You can attract these beneficial mason bees to your yard by making a little mason bee condo. Really easy to make. You can also buy one commercially, but it's one of the easiest projects you'll ever do. All you need is a block of wood that's not treated with any chemicals and a drill with a quarter inch to three eighths inch drill bit. You just need to drill your holes, oh, about three quarters of an inch apart and about three inches deep. Most people have an extra license plate or two laying around. Let's recycle it and make it into the perfect Mason B condo roof. This is what it looks like when you're all done. May not be quite up to Martha's standards, but hey, it's all made with salvaged materials and it just took a few minutes to put together. Put up your newly constructed bee condo in March. Adult mason bees will fly in, they'll go ahead and lay eggs, fill these holes with mud, and then the following year, the new adult bees will emerge from the holes and they'll head straight to your fruit trees to help pollinate them and give you a bumper crop. Well, I hope we've shown you that bugs don't have to bug you. Some bugs can actually be a big help in your garden, and there are some great ways to attract good bugs and keep them buzzing around. And there's lots of non-toxic ways to deal with the creepy crawlies that you don't want hanging around. If you'd like to find out more, you can call the Garden Hotline or visit our Yard Talk website. You'll find great natural solutions and gardening ideas. Until next time, have a healthy garden. And a healthy family, too.